Americans who visited Europe, what was your biggest WTF moment? Had a positive what the frick moment in Greece and the Eastern Peloponnese where I saw the guy walk down to the end of a pier and throw an actual fricking trident into the Aegean and pull out a wriggling octopus. Dude walked up the beach and handed it over the deck railing to a chef. You fricking saw Poseidon? Spent a summer in Germany, they had the cleanest safest best tasting tap water, but nobody drank it and they called it toilet water. Also the older people in village seemed super grumpy and mean and would never smile or respond if you said hello or good morning, but if you asked them a substantive question, like how to get to the museum, they would spend 15 minutes telling you the fastest way to get there, the scenic way to get there, everything interesting you should do on the way there. Why that museum isn't actually that good and you should go to this other museum 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 about the water we do drink it but usually most people prefer sparkling water which you can buy at the shop or you have a soda stream funny enough my biggest wtf moment came from an american we were at a restaurant in Sanctera, Italy called Trattoria dal Billy, about halfway through our meal. I overheard a guy with a Tennessee Arkansas accent say, verbatim, in a frustrated tone you need to speak more American to his waiter. This isn't Rome. This isn't Venice. It's a small town called Manerola. The odds of finding someone fluent in your language are drastically lowered. However, this guy was pompous enough to not only continue to berate his waiter, but then tell the manager who came around that he needs to hire someone who can speak American, in a foreign country, of which he obviously speaks zero of their language. Seriously, WTF. One time in Rome, it started pouring. As I sought shelter, I saw an older man selling one single umbrella. Strange as it was, I needed that umbrella, so I haggled with him and settled on 3 euros. He had the upper hand in that transaction. I wander over to a coffee shop to dry out for a little bit. When I go to leave, the umbrella is no longer in the bucket by the door. Upset at myself for being so trusting, I head into the rain again. Guess who I see? The same old man selling the same umbrella. I try to confront him about stealing back my umbrella, but he claims not to remember our interaction at all. It's pouring and I have a number of miles to walk, so I go through the same charade with him again to re-procure the umbrella. At least this time he took 2 euros. That is an old scam tactic. Going to a soccer game in Italy, when buying a ticket, they needed to know which team I was rooting for to determine where I could sit. Then, during the game, people were setting things on fire. Went to Sweden on a vacation package. Stayed at a wonderful historic hotel for part of the trip that had a restaurant inside of it. Part of our package called for a free dinner at the hotel and we had asked that it be the night we arrived. We arrived and got settled in our room and then went to check out the restaurant. As soon as we walked in, there was no one there, only a hostess. She immediately said they were expecting us and we could sit anywhere. There was no one else in this gorgeous, ornate restaurant. A waiter came out and said they had prepared a special meal for us. We asked why it was so empty and he said the restaurant was closed one day a week and today was that day. We were shocked. We apologized profusely and told them that we had booked through another company and would have just scheduled it for another day. He said it was no problem and we had some free extras such as wine and dessert. The main course ended up being a huge piece of meat, which we jokingly said must have been because we were big fat Americans. No one rushed us. We had a great time, and after we left they closed the restaurant for the night. It was a total WTF moment because if you booked something like this in America, they'd either force you to reschedule or just have the restaurant closed with no explanation. Went to Dover England and saw Mother Fricking Castle. The newest section was built like 300-400 years before my country was founded. Turned a corner and the next part was 200 years older than that. 10 minutes later walk up to a Roman lighthouse built 2000 years ago. Damn. 2000 year old Roman column sitting half sunken in a dude's yard, and he was just mowing around it like it was an old stump. You saw a bird table. We were driving through Spain, and to the side of one of the roads, we noticed these massive bird nests in the high power electrical towers. They were at least twice the size of eagles nests that I had seen, and there were so many of them. Then we saw these giant birds in them. We stopped by the side of the road and tried to take some pictures. 
didn't have a great zoom lens, sadly, but no one else was stopping. It was so odd. We are accustomed to at least a few people stopping to watch the osprey, eagles, or other birds where I'm from. So a few days later, we are chatting with a German tourist, and we bring up the birds. I think she thought we were joking until we pulled out the pictures. Then she started laughing. Storks? Those are storks. Of course, don't you know that? They are everywhere and such a nuisance. Don't you have storks in America? Well, no. Then she looked confused. Well, if you don't have storks, who brings the babies in kids stories? Storks? Um, how does that work? And that was when we realized that the story of the storks makes a whole lot more sense when storks are nesting on every chimney, tree, or tall place. When I visited Prague and water cost 2 crowns and beer cost 1. My uncle went to the Philippines and a double whiskey and coke cost less than a single, because whiskey is cheaper than coke. Every meal in Paris taking 3 hours. I loved the culture and I'm all about eating a relaxing meal, but sometimes it was just like WTF when we were on a schedule and had to meet up with a tour group or had reservations for something. Try getting your bill when you're in a hurry, impossible. Feeling proud of myself for eating late, like a local, at 2100 hours in Lisbon only to walk into a RMT restaurant. By the time I'd finished eating at 2200 hours the place was full. That's only southern Europe, though. Here in Germany it's more like 1820.00. A normal, not bar or snack fast food like restaurant will likely close at 2223.00 and close the kitchen about an hour or so earlier. I was in Scotland this summer and in Edinburgh I asked someone for directions. They told me just go past the Tron in a very thick accent. I though she was saying train except while walking to the train I saw earlier I noticed a bar called the Tron. In UK, we navigate by pubs. My American friends who visited the Netherlands, completely surprised by our bicycle things. Uh, so many bicycles everywhere. Be everybody riding without a helmet. See, so many different bicycles. While in Amsterdam two years ago, saw a woman with two kids and the wheelbarrow contraption at the front of her bike, and a baby strapped to her seat behind her, not a helmet in sight. If she tried that in Toronto, city councillors' heads would explode en masse. I was a military brat living in Belgium when I saw a commercial on AFN, Armed Forces Network, that gave new arrivals to Europe a quick rundown of things. The one thing I learned and that has stuck with me is, no right turn on red. For me it was a lack of insects in England. Not that they don't exist but I'm from Michigan with lots of swampy land around me. When I showed up at my dorm and saw there was no screen on my window I was just thinking about all of the bugs that are gonna get in my room. I got one fly the entire month stay there. Yeah, if you leave your window open at night with the lights on you might get a couple of moths and the occasional spider. But we're really lucky with our relative lack of biting insects and flies. It was subtle at first. But it eventually boggled my mind how old everything was and it was still integrated into everyday life. Like in the UK, drinking in pub that had been in the same spot since the 11th century, or eating dinner at restaurant in an 18th cathedral, or in Prague going to club in a 14th century stone cellar or staying a hotel brewery that had been operating since the 15th century. The oldest building in my vicinity is from the 1750s, which is prehistoric by US standards. But, like, someone in Europe sees a building that is half a millennia old that no one is using and they're like, let's turn this into a disco, I loved it. I live in England and the village near me has a pub from the early 1700s that's seen as modern because the village itself and the surrounding buildings and other pub is from the pre-doomsday book era, 1086, I forget sometimes just how old this country is. I lived in Germany for 8 years from 1992 to 2000, ages 4-12. I didn't realize it until I moved back to the states but there were recycling bins on every street corner. It wasn't just a green bin then a trash can, it was a giant blue bin. One section for green glass, one for brown glass, one for clear glass, one for plastic, and one for paper. Oh and going to a German school, students took public transit. There wasn't such a thing as a school bus. Beer tap in the uni cafeteria. Drinking one beer with your lunch from time to time is not considered special at all in Germany. Drinking two beers every day for lunch makes you an alcoholic. 
How easy and unencumbered by useless bulls most things are. Getting on a 5.30 train from Brussels to Berlin? Show up at 5.20. And get laughed at by the Germans who will finish their beer at exactly 5.28 because they know the walk from the bar to the platform is 1 minute and 57 seconds. In the states that would require showing up at 3.15 because of at least 4 security checkpoints and 8 lines of people who can't figure out how an escalator works. At a lake retreat in Germany, kids playing in around the lake naked. In Amsterdam I saw a guy get jacked in the head with a bottle, take two steps back and then pass out. All his friends scattered. Then the two old men shop owners were like, lol, kids, am I right? I am from the NYNJ area, and have seen firsthand how out of control sporting events can get. Guys, mostly, getting drunk, vandalizing property, throwing cans and bottles, fighting, etc. So when a group of friends went to Germany for Oktoberfest some years ago, we also wanted to see a football, soccer, game. So we got tickets to see Bayern Munich vs. some other German team in what, I think, was a meaningful game. We went more for the experience versus being huge fans. Game is great. I think the score was 5-1, so lots of action. The energy in the stadium was undeniable. Fans singing, jumping around, yelling for the entire game. Game ends. Munich wins. Begin the march to the subway station. Virtually an entire stadium, it seemed, exited to go to this one nearest subway stop. There are four, maybe five cops standing at the entrance steps. Uh oh, this is going to be a huge problem. Thousands of people, lots of them intoxicated, heading toward these five cops at this one exit. It's going to be a disaster. Some guys start pee on a fence within their view. What are they doing? And then, as we watch nervously, the crowd reached the cops and just stopped. Everyone stopped. No one fought. The guys pee finished up their business, zipped up and joined the queue. Cops let enough people by to fill the first train, then the rest stopped, and so on and so forth until our group went. It was incredible. That scene couldn't happen in America. Maybe this was an anomaly, but picturing an event at MSG, there's an army of state troopers to keep order, in addition to local cops, undercover cops, event security, etc and brawls and things still erupt with regularity. This was amazing to us. We still talk about it years later. That was some respectful, organized and orderly crap. The urinal type things in Amsterdam were interesting. Also the way English people say urinal. Paying to use a public restroom. I get why though. Just a horrible feeling if you really had to go and you don't have any change. Every night in Spain, around 3 a.m., this massive fleet of street scrubbers, vacuum mobiles, and water hoses appeared and cleaned the entire city for about an hour. It was like 100 people every night just cleaning the city. The following morning, all of Salamanca was spotless. That crap was magical. Salamanca is beautiful. This is the best bratwurst I've ever had. And this is an airport. Cologne train station bratwurst takes some beating too. 1. I went to the Netherlands for a music festival over the summer last year. The night before I went to a show and met a Scottish guy who came over and said, You look American. I replied yes and he immediately started talking about American politics and the military. It was weird how he assumed I was completely knowledgeable about all upper level government doings, but otherwise was a chill dude. 2. The fact that there's no AC. I didn't realize it wasn't standard and was melting in my hotel room. 3. How uncommon asking for ice is. I've never gotten stranger looks when I would ask for a drink with some ice. One person at the festival had to confirm she understood me lol. I stayed with a family in France for a week. The first thing the son did when I got there was to show me their American refrigerator. I was confused at first because it was a Samsung, but what he really meant was it had an ice machine. He was so proud to have it. I was happy to have ice for the first time in two months. In Scotland there was a bomb threat at a local gas station. The news anchor that was covering it interviewed locals about how they felt about this terrifying event. Every response fell along the lines of, I don't know much about that, but I'm sure the government is taking care of it, back to my day. The faith in the government and not wanting to butt in blew my mind. I was in Italy and wanted to grab a bite and a beer for some lunch. 
I left the flat and I was flabbergasted to find the entire town was empty. Everything was closed. Not even the neighborhood dogs were around. Lived in Italy for 3 years. Definitely took a while to adjust to this though. And you also learn the specific times for places you want to visit since they all close midday for a few hours. In Italy there is virtually no threshold for how much distance should be left between a speeding car and any obstacles, including pedestrians. It is zooming past. A bus driver will rush down a narrow cobblestone street with about a centimeter to spare between the sides of the bus and any parked cars, walls, ancient monuments, or playing children. At a pedestrian crossing in Italy if you approach cautiously and hesitate waiting for cars to slow down for you, you'll get nowhere. You have to just walk out there like you own it and then they stop. The scooters just drive around you. The locals know this and barely even look before crossing but it's scary as crap for tourists. I was in Spain as an exchange student. I had bronchitis after the flight. My host family took me to the air which gave me a pill that eliminated the illness entirely under 2 days. I slept. Woke up 100% better. It was banned in the USA. I wish I could recall its name. In Spain, everyone appears to be very thin, yet I swear eats a loaf of bread a day. The Spanish are quite active, even the elderly will go for their evening strolls. I love Spain. When I visited the hospital and had x-rays done, spoke with two doctors and was tridged by a nurse, all with no health insurance, and my total bill was 24 euros. Then I had to pay 10 additional euros for some painkillers, again with no insurance or anything. I will never understand Americans being so opposed to universal health care. The fact I can pay a few quid a month into the NHS and not worry about choosing between getting food or getting treated for an illness is one of the best things we've ever done in the UK. Not American, but Canadian. First time I went to Ireland, I go through customs and the agent says to me, business or personal, personal, oh yeah, what's up, visiting the in-laws. First time in Ireland. Yes sir. Feckin' A. Well, why ya standin' around? Go get pee. What part of Ireland were you visiting? <laughs> Seeing an elderly Chinese tourist pull down her grandkids pants so he can take a crap on the sidewalk. It was in the entrance of Disneyland in Paris. Google spot the mainlander. <laughs> Germany. Went on a road trip to Hamburg with my friend and her parents in their tiny little car. Dad drove us to the red light district and insisted that we go check it out. Left his wife and 25 yo daughter in the back seat to ogle H through the glass. WTF. Hans? In Venice I saw someone's dog poop in front of two 900 year old churches and then they didn't even bother to pick it up. One poop equals one respect. Went to Spain. They weren't speaking Spanish. I learned that Catalan existed. This was years ago and Galician and Basque, so four proper languages, including Castellano Spanish, and a lot of dialects on top. I went to Portugal and Greece and they offer beer at McDonald's, awesome. And I'm not talking about a no paper cup, I mean a glass of beer. I was in Spain and I saw a group of American tourists wearing sombreros. I once saw a reality TV show where a family visited Japan and the dad kept saying gracious to everyone. His daughter explained that her dad's default is to speak in Spanish to any foreigner. Not even good Spanish. Just basic words like a tourist talking to someone in South America. At pubs in England, younger youngish guys drinking bottles of Budweiser. People walking around drunk and nobody doing anything. Like we're just going to leave this person blackout drunk on the side of the walkway? The littering in a lot of places really blew me away, especially France. Part of this is due to the amount European smoke I guess because at times in Paris the cobblestone felt paved with cigarette butts. The quality of your fast food surprised me. Everything from the street vendors to chain fast food like McDonald's was better quality than anything I'd gotten in Canada. The people at every tourist site trying to sell you their crap was new to me. Knew it was coming but was still surprised by how widespread it was. Really took me by surprise when I saw some of them pulling their water bottles that they sell out of the sewers in the morning though it makes sense in hindsight. 
Prague was even cheaper than what I had been told, was great to be eating like a king without spending much which was refreshing after some of the more expensive countries. Munich blew me away by how well culture and modernization were integrated. Definitely my pick for city I wanted to live in the most. I lived in Spain for 9 months at one point and was trying to get to the supermarket in the middle of a weekday and the entire city center was blocked off. I had to park and walk a ways and discovered that they were having a giant block party. Kegs and all. Around noon. Celebrating the town's new garbage trucks. I love Spain. Public urination is not uncommon. We might still get fined if a police officer happens to be around and you're pee on a building or something. It's only a fine though. You're not going to be put on a craxical list like some people in the US have been put on. Apparently. You've been visited by the good policy grandpa. You will be blessed with good economics and healthcare but only if you comment sleep well burner. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check out another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.